there, and welcome back. I'm Matt Shell, and this is Thousand Ant, where we give you Unity tutorials, devlogs, and indie game dev advice. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through a first look at a incremental game framework that you can download for free if you're interested in trying out making your own incremental style games. Let's take a look. So if you've been following the channel recently, you'll be aware that I'm thinking about taking my untitled cute space game in the direction of being an idle incremental clicker type game. And so I'm looking around to see if there's an existing framework that I could use as opposed to rolling my own from scratch. In the process of research, I found uClicker, which is created by Philip Cass and is available for free on GitHub. You can't beat the price. So let's open it up in Unity and take a look. So what I've got is here, I now have the examples folder imported and I have the uClicker package imported. And so if we open up in the example, the test scene, we're going to be faced with this. And what we'll see right away in examining this is that the clicker runner mono behavior if we open this up in visual studio is incredibly simple right it's really just turning start into a coroutine and firing off a coroutine that is just going to tick every seconds tick the manager save the progress and save to player prefs right and so I like this a lot because this is really delegating a lot of the responsibility to the clicker manager, which if we go ahead and go to definition, we will see inherit from clicker component, which is a scriptable object and also this iserialization callback receiver. The fact that the base component here is a scriptable object is really in line with the way that I have been moving towards structuring all my stuff. I know that some people have different opinions about this, but I think in this context where we're dealing with a game where the game is basically a framework for manipulating a set of data, it's a very kind of abstract type of game. There's no world. There's no colliders or anything like that. It's really just kind of a data framework. Having everything packaged into scriptable objects in this way, for me, makes a lot of sense. So what we'll see is that when we have our clicker runner mono behavior attached to just a blank game object in the scene, we can select a scriptable object asset which in this case for the demo is the rabbit manager. But what's interesting, you'll also see this clicker test manager that I did when I was kind of doing my first test without the example content, and that's available as an option as well. So let's just start off by just running the game. Some of you may not be familiar. I'm also gonna just, I just hate this blue background. Let's go ahead and just get a nice white, uh, also so we can see the text, right? Now you can see, that actually I have already done some clicking here and that's why we have some rabbit currency already, right? We have rabbits, we have upgrades which are parsley and spinach, and I've built six cages and a hutch. It's also worth noting that this is actually inspired by and based on the idle clicker uh, web-based framework. So I found it from this Reddit post via Google. And if we go through to Philip Cass, the author, his GitHub, we'll see that he has a link to this Idle Game Maker, which is a web-based idle game authoring framework. You can see here, yeah, I think I already clicked some bunnies in this as well. I was testing this out, very cute, right? Uh, we can buy more rabbit cages buy rabbit hutches, buy upgrades, right? This is already set up with some, you know, with some example graphics and gameplay, but you can actually make your own games here. So it's a little simple game engine for browser-based idle games, super cool. I haven't dug too deeply into it, but I recommend you check it out. All right, so back in Unity, we can see we have these buildings, which we can buy. Those will increase the number of rabbits that we're producing. 
we have this lettuce, which is an upgrade, which will add one to our click, right? And then we have this readout. Now it's showing space bucks. That was my test currency that I made and I'll show you where that is. And then it's showing that we have at this point, 2000 rabbits, right? We have these upgrades active and the current buildings active, right? So this is really simple the way he's got it. He's just showing it via text, which I kind of like, right? Because we're not tied into some kind of bloated UI or something that's already predefined. I feel like those are the kind of things that you're gonna to wanna to do yourself. And he's kind of left it in this bare bones state, which is cool. Okay, so what we see in the clicker runner, right? Is that we picked the manager, but where is the manager? The manager is in this data folder and here it is. And it's a scriptable object. And what we've got is we have the save settings, right? We can choose the save type, the name, the path. The configuration is what currencies are active. Right now we have rabbit, but we could also choose space bucks. Now that's populating because in my clicker test folder here, I created a currency, which is basically just like a blank asset called space bucks. And so in our rabbit manager, it's actually finding any asset of the type currency and populating it into this menu, which is a really nice little quality of life workflow thing that he's created here in this in the editor scripting for this. We also have the clickables right now. We have the basic button and then the example that I created available buildings, available upgrades, right? And again, these are also just here's the lettuce, right? Upgrade. And we can see that it's unlocked. Here are the requirement groups. Now this is pretty interesting. Group operand, the currency needs to be, we need to have of the type rabbit 200, then this is going to unlock. We have the cost, right? In what currency, the amount, and then the upgrade perk here is the target currency. If we look at this as this is not actually affecting the currency, what it's affecting is the clickable. It's adding a modifier to the basic button and adding one every time we click the basic button, right? So that's what this upgrade does. And then there's a few others here. And then if we look at buildings, let's look at a cage. Cage is a little more simple, but basically we say, what's the cost? What type of currency? How much does it cost? The yield amount, how much is it gonna add to our automatic gain of currency? And if we look in the Rabbit Manager, what we'll see is that the building cost increase here is a fixed factor, right? So each time we buy a building, it's gonna become 15% more expensive. This is an interesting area that I need to go and do some exploration and research in is the kind of designing the difficulty curve of a game like this. I think that's gonna be interesting to learn about. But here, this is basically the kind of the key factor. And then we have the state, what buildings are earned, the count, earned upgrades, currencies, currency count totals. So right now I have 2,400 rabbits. Currency historical totals, right? High scores. I think I reset the score once, which is interesting. Actually, I have to explore that a little bit more. Here, we can populate the buildings. This is gonna basically search the asset folders and find anything that's called a building, populate the upgrades, and populate it into these menus. We can reset progress, save, and load. So I've gotta say, after doing some preliminary research and exploration, looking at this package, I am feeling reasonably confident that this may be a good tool for me to use for my game. At least confident enough to invest a couple more days in building out a little clicker implementation and tying it into my space game logic. The fact that the code looks clean, that it's already following this kind of data-oriented, scriptable object-oriented approach that I've been choosing to follow for the rest of my code architecture makes me feel like this is heading in the right direction. And I think that it is going to give me a great head start in terms of prototyping this as an idea from the game design side, right? Without having to go and write a ton of, you know, maybe a little bit boilerplate code. I think that one of the reasons that I'm interested in the incremental genre is because there's a kind of a clear base framework. There's a lot of people doing innovative things on top of that, right? But the core game is relatively clear what it is. 
And so instead of having to re-implement that kind of core functionality myself, being able to grab a framework, I think is a, is a sensible um, first step in terms of exploring this as a direction. So I'm gonna give that a try. I'll report back in some of the main space game devlogs how that's going and if this is a direction I'm gonna continue in. But for the time being, I'm feeling pretty good about it. Let me know down in the comments if you have ever tried to build an incremental or idle style game and what your experience was like with that. I'm pretty curious to hear actually from other folks in the community. Also, join the conversation on Thousand Ant Discord. The link is down in the description. Of course, I'll put a link in the description to the GitHub repo and the Reddit post and, and the stuff so that you can find that. If you're enjoying the content, please do consider subscribing. Drop a like on the video. It helps us to bubble up through the YouTube algorithm and to be discovered by more folks like you who are interested in this type of material. Yeah, just really appreciate your spending a little bit of time with me. So as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.